Chapter 1 The words of God which he spake unto Moses, at a time when Moses was caught up into an exceedingly high mountain. And he saw God face to face, and he talked with him, and the glory of God was upon Moses, therefore Moses could endure his presence. And God spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, I am the Lord God Almighty, and endless is my name. For I am without beginning of days or end of years, and is not this endless? And behold, thou art my son. Wherefore look, and I will show thee the workmanship of mine hands. But not all, for my works are without end, and also my words, for they never cease. Wherefore no man can behold all my works, except he behold all my glory. And no man can behold all my glory and afterwards remain in the flesh on the earth. And I have a work for thee, Moses, my son, and thou art in the similitude of mine only begotten, and mine only begotten is and shall be the Saviour, for he is full of grace and truth. But there is no God beside me, and all things are present with me, for I know them all. And now behold, this one thing I show unto thee, Moses, my son, for thou art in the world, and now I show it unto thee. And it came to pass that Moses looked, and beheld the world upon which he was created. And Moses beheld the world and the ends thereof, and all the children of men which are, and which were created. Of the same he greatly marveled and wondered. And the presence of God withdrew from Moses, that his glory was not upon Moses. And Moses was left unto himself, and as he was left unto himself, he fell unto the earth. And it came to pass that it was for the space of many hours before Moses did again receive his natural strength like unto man. And he said unto himself, Now for this cause I know that man is nothing, which thing I never had supposed. But now mine own eyes have beheld God, but not my natural but my spiritual eyes for my natural eyes could not have beheld. For I should have withered and died in his presence, but his glory was upon me, and I beheld his face, for I was transfigured before him. And it came to pass that when Moses had said these words, behold, Satan came tempting him, saying, Moses, son of man, worship me. And it came to pass that Moses looked upon Satan and said, who art thou? For behold, I am a son of God, in the similitude of his only begotten. And where is thy glory that I should worship thee? For behold, I could not look upon God except his glory should come upon me, and I were transfigured before him. But I can look upon thee in the natural man. Is it not so, surely? Blessed be the name of my God for his spirit hath not altogether withdrawn from me. Or else where is thy glory? For it is darkness unto me. And I can judge between thee and God. For God said unto me, Worship God, for him only shalt thou serve. Get thee hence, Satan, deceive me not. For God said unto me, Thou art after the similitude of mine only begotten. And he also gave me commandments, when he called unto me out of the burning bush, saying, Call upon God in the name of mine only begotten, and worship me. And again Moses said, I will not cease to call upon God. I have other things to inquire of him, for his glory has been upon me. Wherefore I can judge between him and thee. Depart hence, Satan. And now when Moses had said these words, Satan cried with a loud voice, and ranted upon the earth, and commanded, saying, I am the only begotten, worship me. And it came to pass that Moses began to fear exceedingly, and as he began to fear he saw the bitterness of hell. Nevertheless, calling upon God, he received strength, and he commanded, saying, Depart from me, Satan, for this one God only will I worship, which is the God of glory. And now Satan began to tremble, 
and the earth shook, and Moses received strength, and called upon God, saying, In the name of the only begotten, depart hence, Satan. And it came to pass that Satan cried with a loud voice, with weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, and he departed hence, even from the presence of Moses, that he beheld him not. And now of this thing Moses bore record, but because of wickedness it is not had among the children of men. And it came to pass that when Satan had departed from the presence of Moses, that Moses lifted up his eyes unto heaven, being filled with the Holy Ghost, which beareth record of the Father and the Son. And calling upon the name of God, he beheld his glory again, for it was upon him. And he heard a voice saying, Blessed art thou, Moses, for I the Almighty have chosen thee, and thou shalt be made stronger than many waters, for they shall obey thy command as if thou wert God. And lo, I am with thee, even unto the end of thy days, for thou shalt deliver my people from bondage, even Israel my chosen. And it came to pass, as the voice was still speaking, Moses cast his eyes and beheld the earth, yea, even all of it, and there was not a particle of it which he did not behold, discerning it by the Spirit of God. And he beheld also the inhabitants thereof, and there was not a soul which he beheld not, and he discerned them by the Spirit of God, and their numbers were great, even numberless as the sand upon the seashore. And he beheld many lands, and each land was called earth, and there were inhabitants on the face thereof. And it came to pass that Moses called upon God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, why these things are so, and by what thou madest them. And behold, the glory of the Lord was upon Moses, so that Moses stood in the presence of God, and talked with him face to face. And the Lord God said unto Moses, For mine own purpose have I made these things. Here is wisdom, and it remaineth in me. And by the word of my power have I created them, which is mine only begotten Son, who is full of grace and truth. And worlds without number have I created, and I also created them for mine own purpose, and by the Son I created them, which is mine only begotten. And the first man of all men have I called Adam, which is many. But only an account of this earth and the inhabitants thereof give I unto you. For behold, there are many worlds that have passed away by the word of my power. And there are many that now stand, and innumerable are they unto man. But all things are numbered unto me, for they are mine, and I know them. And it came to pass that Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Be merciful unto thy servant, O God, and tell me concerning this earth and the inhabitants thereof, and also the heavens, and then thy servant will be content. And the Lord God spake unto Moses, saying, The heavens they are many, and they cannot be numbered unto man, but they are numbered unto me, for they are mine. And as one earth shall pass away, and the heavens thereof even so shall another come, and there is no end to my works, neither to my words. For behold, this is my work and my glory, to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. And now Moses my son, I will speak unto thee concerning this earth upon which thou standest, and thou shalt write the things which I shall speak. And in a day when the children of men shall esteem my words as naught, and take many of them from the book which thou shalt write, behold, I will raise up another like unto thee, and they shall be had again among the children of men, among as many as shall believe. These words were spoken unto Moses in the mount, the name of which shall not be known among the children of men, and now they are spoken unto you. Show them not unto any except them that believe. Even so. Amen. Chapter 2 
And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, I reveal unto you concerning this heaven and this earth. Write the words which I speak. I am the beginning and the end, the Almighty God. By mine only begotten I created these things. Yea, in the beginning I created the heaven, and the earth upon which thou standest. And the earth was without form and void. And I caused darkness to come up upon the face of the deep. And my spirit moved upon the face of the water, for I am God. And I, God, said, Let there be light. And there was light. And I, God, saw the light. And that light was good. And I, God, divided the light from the darkness. And I, God, called the light day, and the darkness I called night. And this I did by the word of my power, and it was done as I spake. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And again I, God, said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the water. And it was so even as I spake. And I said, Let it divide the waters from the waters. And it was done. And I, God, made the firmament, and divided the waters, yea, the great waters under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so even as I spake. And I, God, called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And I, God, said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. And it was so. And I, God, said, let there be dry land, and it was so. And I, God, called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called I the sea. And I, God, saw that all things which I had made were good. And I, God, said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed should be in itself upon the earth, and it was so, even as I spake. And the earth brought forth grass, every herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed should be in itself after his kind. And I, God, saw that all things which I had made were good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And I, God, said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And I, God, made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. And the greater light was the sun, and the lesser light was the moon and the stars also were made even according to my word. And I, God, set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and the sun to rule over the day, and the moon to rule over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And I, God, saw that all things which I had made were good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And I, God, said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl which may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And I, God, created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And I, God, saw that all things which I had created were good. And I, God, blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And I, God, said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, and creeping things, and beasts of the earth after their kind. And it was so. And I, God, made the beasts of the earth after their kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything which creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And I, God, saw that all these things were good. And I, God, said unto mine only begotten, which was with me from the beginning, Let us make man in our image, 
after our likeness, and it was so. And I, God, said, Let them have dominion over the fishes of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And I, God, created man in mine own image, in the image of mine only begotten created I him. Male and female created I them. And I, God, blessed them, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And I, God, said unto man, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which shall be the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein I grant life, there shall be given every clean herb for meat. And it was so, even as I spake. And I, God, saw everything that I had made, and behold, all things which I had made were very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Chapter 3 Thus the heaven and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day I, God, ended my work, and all things which I had made. And I rested on the seventh day from all my work, and all things which I had made were finished. And I, God, saw that they were good. And I, God, blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it I had rested from all my work which I, God, had created and made. And now behold, I say unto you that these are the generations of the heaven and of the earth when they were created, in the day that I, the Lord God, made the heaven and the earth, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For I, the Lord God, created all things of which I have spoken, spiritually, before they were naturally upon the face of the earth. For I, the Lord God, had not caused it to rain upon the face of the earth. And I, the Lord God, had created all the children of men, and not yet a man to till the ground. For in heaven created I them. And there was not yet flesh upon the earth, neither in the water, neither in the air. But I the Lord God spake, and there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And I the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul, the first flesh upon the earth, the first man also. Nevertheless, all things were before created but spiritually were they created and made according to my word. And I the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there I put the man whom I had formed. And out of the ground made I the Lord God to grow every tree naturally that is pleasant to the sight of man, and man could behold it. And it became also a living soul, for it was spiritual in the day that I created it for it remaineth in the sphere in which I, God, created it, yea, even all things which I prepared for the use of man. And man saw that it was good for food, and I, the Lord God, planted the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and also the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And I, the Lord God, caused a river to go out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and became into four heads. And I, the Lord God, called the name of the first Pison, and it compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where I, the Lord God, created much gold. And the gold of that land was good, and there was Delium and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river was called Gihon, the same that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river was Hiddekel, that which goeth toward the east of Assyria and the fourth river was the Euphrates. And I, the Lord God, took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it.
And I the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Nevertheless, thou mayest choose for thyself, for it is given unto thee. But remember that I forbid it, for in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And I the Lord God said unto mine only begotten, that it was not good that the man should be alone. Wherefore I will make an help meet for him. And out of the ground I the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and commanded that they should come unto Adam, to see what he would call them. And they were also living souls, for I God breathed into them the breath of life, and commanded that whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that should be the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But as for Adam, there was not found an helpmeet for him. And I the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept, and I took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh in the stead thereof. And the rib which I the Lord God had taken from man, made I a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This I know now is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Chapter 4 and I the Lord God spake unto Moses, saying, That Satan whom thou hast commanded in the name of mine only begotten is the same which was from the beginning. And he came before me, saying, Behold, here am I, send me. I will be thy son, and I will redeem all mankind. That one soul shall not be lost, and surely I will do it. Wherefore give me thine honor. But behold, my beloved Son, which was my beloved and chosen from the beginning, said unto me, Father, thy will be done, and the glory be thine forever. Wherefore, because that Satan rebelled against me, and sought to destroy the agency of man which I the Lord God had given him, and also that I should give unto him mine own power, by the power of mine only begotten, I caused that he should be cast down. And he became Satan, yea, even the devil, the father of all lies, to deceive and to blind men, and to lead them captive at his will, even as many as would not hearken unto my voice. And now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which I the Lord God had made. And Satan put it into the heart of the serpent, for he had drawn away many after him, and he sought also to beguile Eve, for he knew not the mind of God, wherefore he sought to destroy the world. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And he spake by the mouth of the serpent. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which thou beholdest in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it became pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make her wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and also gave unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they had been naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God as they were walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife went to hide themselves from the presence of the Lord God 
amongst the trees of the garden. And I the Lord God called unto Adam, and said unto him, Where goest thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I beheld that I was naked, and I hid myself. And I the Lord God said unto Adam, Who told thee thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? If so, thou shouldst surely die? And the man said, The woman thou gavest me, and commandest that she should remain with me, she gave me of the fruit of the tree, and I did eat. And I the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this thing which thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And I the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou shalt be cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, and he shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman I the Lord God said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam I the Lord God said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the fruit of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, Cursed shall be the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. By the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, until thou shalt return unto the ground. For thou shalt surely die. For out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou wast and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. For thus have I, the Lord God, called the first of all women, which are many. Unto Adam and also unto his wife did I, the Lord God, make coats of skins, and clothed them. And I, the Lord God, said unto mine only begotten, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand, and partake also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever, therefore I the Lord God will send him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. For as I the Lord God liveth, even so my words cannot return void, for as they go forth out of my mouth they must be fulfilled. So I drove out the man, and I placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. And these are the words which I spake unto my servant Moses, and they are true even as I will, and I have spoken them unto you. See thou show them unto no man until I command you, except to them that believe. Amen. Chapter 5 And it came to pass that after I the Lord God had driven them out, that Adam began to till the earth, and to have dominion over all the beasts of the field, and to eat his bread by the sweat of his brow, as I the Lord had commanded him. And Eve also his wife did labor with him. And Adam knew his wife, and she bare unto him sons and daughters, and they began to multiply and to replenish the earth. And from that time forth the sons and daughters of Adam began to divide two and two in the land, and to till the land, and to tend flocks, and they also begat sons and daughters. And Adam and Eve his wife called upon the name of the Lord, and they heard the voice of the Lord from the way toward the Garden of Eden speaking unto them, and they saw him not for they were shut out from his presence. And he gave unto them commandments that they should worship the Lord their God, and should offer the firstlings of their flocks for an offering unto the Lord. 
And Adam was obedient unto the commandments of the Lord. And after many days an angel of the Lord appeared unto Adam, saying, Why dost thou offer sacrifices unto the Lord? And Adam said unto him, I know not, save the Lord commanded me. And then the angel spake, saying, This thing is a similitude of the sacrifice of the only begotten of the Father, which is full of grace and truth. Wherefore thou shalt do all that thou doest in the name of the Son, and thou shalt repent, and call upon God in the name of the Son for evermore. And in that day the Holy Ghost fell upon Adam, which beareth record of the Father and the Son, saying, I am the only begotten of the Father from the beginning, henceforth and forever, that as thou hast fallen, thou mayest be redeemed, and all mankind, even as many as will. And in that day Adam blessed God and was filled, and began to prophesy concerning all the families of the earth, saying, Blessed be the name of God, for because of my transgression my eyes are opened, and in this life I shall have joy, and again in the flesh I shall see God. And Eve his wife heard all these things and was glad, saying, Were it not for our transgression, we never should have had seed, and never should have known good and evil, and the joy of our redemption, and the eternal life which God giveth unto all the obedient. And Adam and Eve blessed the name of God, and they made all things known unto their sons and their daughters. And Satan came among them, saying, I am also a son of God. And he commanded them, saying, Believe it not. And they believed it not. And they loved Satan more than God. And men began from that time forth to be carnal, sensual, and devilish. And the Lord God called upon men by the Holy Ghost everywhere, and commanded them that they should repent. And as many as believed in the Son and repented of their sins, should be saved, and as many as believed not and repented not, should be damned. And the words went forth out of the mouth of God in a firm decree, wherefore they must be fulfilled. And Adam and Eve his wife ceased not to call upon God. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord wherefore he may not reject his words. But behold, Cain hearkened not, saying, Who is the Lord that I should know him? And she again conceived and bare his brother Abel. And Abel hearkened unto the voice of the Lord. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And Cain loved Satan more than God. And Satan commanded him, saying, Make an offering unto the Lord. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. Now Satan knew this, and it pleased him. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, thou shalt be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and Satan desireth to have thee. And except thou shalt hearken unto my commandments, I will deliver thee up and it shall be unto thee according to his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. For from this time forth thou shalt be the father of his lies. Thou shalt be called perdition, for thou wast also before the world. And it shall be said in time to come that these abominations were had from Cain, for he rejected the greater counsel which was had from God. And this is a cursing which I will put upon thee, except thou repent. And Cain was wroth, and listened not any more to the voice of the Lord, neither to Abel his brother, 
who walked in holiness before the Lord. And Adam and his wife mourned before the Lord because of Cain and his brethren. And it came to pass that Cain took one of his brother's daughters to wife, and they loved Satan more than God. And Satan said unto Cain, Swear unto me by thy throat, and if thou tell it, thou shalt die. And swear thy brethren by their heads, and by the living God, that they tell it not. For if they tell it, they shall surely die. And this that thy father may not know it, and this day I will deliver thy brother Abel into thine hands. And Satan sware unto Cain that he would do according to his commands. And all these things were done in secret. And Cain said, Truly I am Mahan, the master of this great secret, that I may murder and get gain. Wherefore Cain was called Master Mahan, and he gloried in his wickedness. And Cain went into the field, and Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass that while they were in the field, Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And Cain gloried in that which he had done, saying, I am free, surely the flocks of my brother falleth into my hands. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. And now thou shalt be cursed from the earth which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, Satan tempted me because of my brother's flocks, and I was wroth also, for his offering thou didst accept, and not mine. My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the Lord, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that he that findeth me will slay me because of mine iniquities, for these things are not hid from the Lord. And I the Lord said unto him, Whosoever slayeth thee, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And I the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain was shut out from the presence of the Lord. And with his wife and many of his brethren dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he also begat many sons and daughters. And he builded a city, and he called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Irad, and other sons and daughters. And Irad begat Mehujael, and other sons and daughters. And Mehujael begat Methusael, and other sons and daughters. And Methusael begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto himself two wives, the name of one being Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. And Ada bare Jabel. He was the father of such as dwell in tents, and they were keepers of cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, who was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was called Naamah. And Lamech said unto his wives Ada and Zillah, Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech shall be seventy and sevenfold. For Lamech, having entered into a covenant with Satan, after the manner of Cain, wherein he became Master Mahan, master of that great secret which was administered unto Cain by Satan. And Irad, the son of Enoch, having known their secret, began to reveal it unto the sons of Adam. Wherefore Lamech, being angry, slew him, not like unto Cain his brother Abel, for the sake of getting gain, 
but he slew him for the oath's sake. For from the days of Cain there was a secret combination, and their works were in the dark, and they knew every man his brother. Wherefore the Lord cursed Lamech and his house, and all them that had covenanted with Satan. For they kept not the commandments of God, and it displeased God, and he ministered not unto them. And their works were abominations, and began to spread among all the sons of men, and it was among the sons of men. And among the daughters of men these things were not spoken, because that Lamech had spoken the secret unto his wives, and they rebelled against him, and declared these things abroad, and had not compassion. Wherefore Lamech was despised and cast out, and came not among the sons of men, lest he should die. And thus the works of darkness began to prevail among all the sons of men. And God cursed the earth with a sore curse, and was angry with the wicked, with all the sons of men whom he had made. For they would not hearken unto his voice, nor believe on his only begotten Son, even him whom he declared should come in the meridian of time, who was prepared from before the foundation of the world. And thus the gospel began to be preached from the beginning, being declared by holy angels sent forth from the presence of God, and by his own voice, and by the gift of the Holy Ghost. And thus all things were confirmed unto Adam by an holy ordinance, and the gospel preached, and a decree sent forth, that it should be in the world until the end thereof, and thus it was. Amen. Chapter 6 And Adam hearkened unto the voice of God, and called upon his sons to repent. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and he called his name Seth. And Adam glorified the name of God, for he said, God hath appointed me another seed, instead of Abel whom Cain slew. And God revealed himself unto Seth, and he rebelled not, but offered an acceptable sacrifice, like unto his brother Abel. And to him also was born a son, and he called his name Enos. And then began these men to call upon the name of the Lord, and the Lord blessed them. And a book of remembrance was kept, in the which was recorded in the language of Adam, for it was given unto as many as called upon God to write by the Spirit of inspiration. And by them their children were taught to read and write, having a language which was pure and undefiled. Now this same priesthood which was in the beginning shall be in the end of the world also. Now this prophecy Adam spake, as he was moved upon by the Holy Ghost, and a genealogy was kept of the children of God. And this was the book of the generations of Adam, saying, In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. In the image of his own body, male and female, created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created and became living souls, in the land upon the footstool of God. And Adam lived one hundred and thirty years, and begat a son in his own likeness, after his own image, and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were eight hundred years, and he begat many sons and daughters. And all the days that Adam lived were nine hundred and thirty years, and he died. Seth lived one hundred and five years, and begat Enos, and prophesied in all his days, and taught his son Enos in the ways of God, wherefore Enos prophesied also. And Seth lived after he begat Enos eight hundred and seven years, and begat many sons and daughters. And the children of men were numerous upon all the face of the land. And in those days Satan had great dominion among men, and raged in their hearts. And from thenceforth came wars and bloodshed, and a man's hand was against his own brother, in administering death, because of secret works seeking for power. All the days of Seth were nine hundred and twelve years, and he died. And Enos lived ninety years, and begat Canaan. 
And Enos and the residue of the people of God came out from the land which was called Shulon, and dwelt in a land of promise, which he called after his own son, whom he had named Canaan. And Enos lived after he begat Canaan eight hundred and fifteen years, and begat many sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were nine hundred and five years, and he died. And Canaan lived seventy years, and begat Mahalaleel. And Canaan lived after he begat Mahalaleel eight hundred and forty years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were nine hundred and ten years, and he died. And Mahalaleel lived sixty-five years, and begat Jared. And Mahalaleel lived after he begat Jared eight hundred and thirty years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalaleel were eight hundred and ninety-five years, and he died. And Jared lived one hundred and sixty-two years, and begat Enoch. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch eight hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And Jared taught Enoch in all the ways of God. And this is the genealogy of the sons of Adam, who was the Son of God, with whom God himself conversed. And they were preachers of righteousness, and spake and prophesied, and called upon all men everywhere to repent. And faith was taught unto the children of men. And it came to pass that all the days of Jared were nine hundred and sixty-two years, and he died. And Enoch lived sixty-five years, and begat Methuselah. And it came to pass that Enoch journeyed in the land among the people, and as he journeyed, the Spirit of God descended out of heaven and abode upon him. And he heard a voice from heaven saying, Enoch my son, prophesy unto this people, and say unto them, Repent, for thus saith the Lord, I am angry with this people and my fierce anger is kindled against them. For their hearts have waxed hard, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes cannot see afar off. And for these many generations, ever since the day that I created them, have they gone astray and have denied me, and have sought their own counsels in the dark, and in their own abominations have they devised murder, and have not kept the commandments, which I gave unto their father Adam. Wherefore they have forsworn themselves, and by their oaths they have brought upon themselves death. And a hell I have prepared for them if they repent not. And this is a decree, which I have sent forth in the beginning of the world, from my own mouth, from the foundation thereof, and by the mouths of my servants, thy fathers, have I decreed it, even as it shall be sent forth in the world, unto the ends thereof. And when Enoch had heard these words, he bowed himself to the earth before the Lord, and spake before the Lord, saying, Why is it that I have found favor in thy sight, and am but a lad, and all the people hate me? For I am slow of speech, wherefore am I thy servant? And the Lord said unto Enoch, Go forth and do as I have commanded thee, and no man shall pierce thee. Open thy mouth, and it shall be filled, and I will give thee utterance, for all flesh is in my hands, and I will do as seemeth me good. Say unto this people, Choose ye this day to serve the Lord God who made you. Behold, my spirit is upon you. Wherefore all thy words will I justify, and the mountains shall flee before you, and the rivers shall turn from their course, and thou shalt abide in me, and I in you. Therefore walk with me. And the Lord spake unto Enoch, and said unto him, Anoint thine eyes with clay, and wash them, and thou shalt see. And he did so and he beheld the spirits that God had created. And he beheld also things which were not visible to the natural eye. And from thenceforth came the saying abroad in the land, A seer hath the Lord raised up unto his people.
And it came to pass that Enoch went forth in the land among the people, standing upon the hills and the high places, and cried with a loud voice testifying against their works. And all men were offended because of him. And they came forth to hear him upon the high places, saying unto the tent keepers, Tarry ye here and keep the tents, while we go yonder to behold the seer, for he prophesieth, and there is a strange thing in the land, a wild man hath come among us. And it came to pass when they heard him, no man laid hands on him, for fear came on all them that heard him, for he walked with God. And there came a man unto him whose name was Mahijah, and said unto him, Tell us plainly who thou art, and from whence thou comest. And he said unto them, I came out from the land of Canaan, the land of my fathers, a land of righteousness unto this day. And my father taught me in all the ways of God. And it came to pass as I journeyed from the land of Canaan by the sea east, I beheld a vision. And lo, the heavens I saw, and the Lord spake with me, and gave me commandment, wherefore for this cause to keep the commandment, I speak forth these words. And Enoch continued his speech, saying, The Lord which spake with me, the same is the God of heaven, and he is my God and your God, and ye are my brethren, and why counsel ye yourselves, and deny the God of heaven? The heavens he made, the earth is his footstool, and the foundation thereof is his. Behold, he laid it, an host of men hath he brought in upon the face thereof. And death hath come upon our fathers, nevertheless we know them and cannot deny, and even the first of all we know, even Adam. For a book of remembrance we have written among us according to the pattern given by the finger of God, and it is given in our own language. And as Enoch spake forth the words of God, the people trembled, and could not stand in his presence. And he said unto them, Because that Adam fell, we are, and by his fall came death, and we are made partakers of misery and woe. Behold, Satan hath come among the children of men, and tempteth them to worship him. And men have become carnal, sensual, and devilish, and are shut out from the presence of God. But God hath made known unto our fathers that all men must repent. And he called upon our father Adam by his own voice, saying, I am God. I made the world, and men before they were in the flesh. And he also said unto him, if thou wilt turn unto me and hearken unto my voice, and believe, and repent of all thy transgressions, and be baptized even in water, in the name of mine only begotten Son, who is full of grace and truth, which is Jesus Christ, the only name which shall be given under heaven, whereby salvation shall come unto the children of men, ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, asking all things in his name, and whatsoever ye shall ask, it shall be given you. And our father Adam spake unto the Lord, and said, Why is it that men must repent and be baptized in water? And the Lord said unto Adam, Behold, I have forgiven thee thy transgression in the garden of Eden. Hence came the saying abroad among the people, that the Son of God hath atoned for original guilt, wherein the sins of the parents cannot be answered upon the heads of the children, for they are whole from the foundation of the world. And the Lord spake unto Adam, saying, Inasmuch as thy children are conceived in sin, even so when they begin to grow up, sin conceiveth in their hearts, and they taste the bitter, that they may know to prize the good. And it is given unto them to know good from evil. Wherefore they are agents unto themselves, and I have given unto you another law and commandment. Wherefore teach it unto your children, that all men everywhere must repent, or they can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. For no unclean thing can dwell there, or dwell in his presence. 
for in the language of Adam, man of holiness is his name, and the name of his only begotten is the Son of Man, even Jesus Christ, a righteous judge, who shall come in the meridian of time. Therefore I give unto you a commandment, to teach these things freely unto your children, saying, that by reason of transgression cometh the fall, which fall bringeth death, and inasmuch as ye were born into the world by water and blood and the Spirit, which I have made, and so became of dust a living soul, even so ye must be born again into the kingdom of heaven, of water and of the Spirit, and be cleansed by blood, even the blood of mine only begotten that ye might be sanctified from all sin, and enjoy the words of eternal life in this world, and eternal life in the world to come, even immortal glory. For by the water ye keep the commandment, by the Spirit ye are justified, and by the blood ye are sanctified. Therefore it is given to abide in you the record of heaven, the Comforter, the peaceable things of immortal glory, the truth of all things, that which quickeneth all things, which maketh alive all things, that which knoweth all things, and hath all power according to wisdom, mercy, truth, justice, and judgment. And now behold, I say unto you, this is the plan of salvation unto all men, through the blood of mine only begotten who shall come in the meridian of time. And behold, all things have their likeness, and all things are created and made to bear record of me, both things which are temporal and things which are spiritual, things which are in the heavens above, and things which are on the earth, and things which are in the earth, and things which are under the earth, both above and beneath. All things bear record of me. And it came to pass, when the Lord had spoken with Adam our father, that Adam cried unto the Lord, and he was caught away by the Spirit of the Lord, and was carried down into the water, and was laid under the water, and was brought forth out of the water. And thus he was baptized, and the Spirit of God descended upon him. And thus he was born of the Spirit, and became quickened in the inner man. And he heard a voice out of heaven saying, Thou art baptized with fire and with the Holy Ghost. This is the record of the Father and the Son from henceforth and forever. And thou art after the order of him who was without beginning of days or end of years, from all eternity to all eternity. Behold, thou art one in me, a son of God, and thus may all become my sons. Amen. Chapter 7 And it came to pass that Enoch continued his speech, saying, Behold, our father Adam taught these things, and many have believed and become the sons of God, and many have believed not and have perished in their sins, and are looking forth with fear in torment for the fiery indignation of the wrath of God to be poured out upon them. And from that time forth Enoch began to prophesy, saying unto the people that, As I was journeying and stood upon the place Mahuja, and cried unto the Lord, there came a voice out of heaven saying, Turn ye, and get ye upon the mount Simeon. And it came to pass that I turned and went up on the mount, and as I stood upon the mount, I beheld the heavens open, and I was clothed upon with glory. And I saw the Lord, and he stood before my face, and he talked with me, even as a man talketh one with another face to face. And he said unto me, Look, and I will show unto thee the world for the space of many generations. And it came to pass that I beheld in the valley of Shum, and lo, a great people which dwelt in tents, which were the people of Shum. And again the Lord said unto me, Look. And I looked towards the north, and I beheld the people of Canaan which dwelt in tents. And the Lord said unto me, Prophesy. And I prophesied, saying, 
Behold, the people of Canaan, which are numerous, shall go forth in battle array against the people of Shum, and shall slay them that they shall utterly be destroyed. And the people of Canaan shall divide themselves in the land, and the land shall be barren and unfruitful, and none other people shall dwell there but the people of Canaan. For behold, the Lord shall curse the land with much heat, and the barrenness thereof shall go forth forever. And there was a blackness came upon all the children of Canaan, that they were despised among all people. And it came to pass that the Lord said unto me, Look. And I looked, and I beheld the land of Sharon, and the land of Enoch, and the land of Omner, and the land of Henai, and the land of Shem, and the land of Hanner, and the land of Hananihah and all the inhabitants thereof. And the Lord said unto me, Go to this people, and say unto them, Repent, lest I come out and smite them with a curse, and they die. And he gave unto me a commandment, that I should baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son, which is full of grace and truth, and of the Holy Ghost, which beareth record of the Father and the Son. And it came to pass that Enoch continued to call upon all the people, save it were the people of Canaan, to repent. And so great was the faith of Enoch that he led the people of God, and their enemies came to battle against them. And he spake the word of the Lord, and the earth trembled, and the mountains fled even according to his command. And the rivers of water were turned out of their course, and the roar of the lions was heard out of the wilderness. And all nations feared greatly, so powerful was the word of Enoch and so great was the power of the language which God had given him. There also came up a land out of the depth of the sea, and so great was the fear of the enemies of the people of God that they fled and stood afar off, and went upon the land which came up out of the depth of the sea. And the giants of the land also stood afar off, and there went forth a curse upon all people that fought against God. And from that time forth there were wars and bloodshed among them. But the Lord came and dwelt with his people, and they dwelt in righteousness. The fear of the Lord was upon all nations, so great was the glory of the Lord which was upon his people. And the Lord blessed the land, and they were blessed upon the mountains and upon the high places, and did flourish. And the Lord called his people Zion because they were of one heart and one mind, and dwelt in righteousness, and there was no poor among them. And Enoch continued his preaching in righteousness unto the people of God. And it came to pass in his days that he built a city that was called the City of Holiness, even Zion. And it came to pass that Enoch talked with the Lord, and he said unto the Lord, Surely Zion shall dwell in safety forever. But the Lord said unto Enoch, Zion have I blessed, but the residue of the people have I cursed. And it came to pass that the Lord showed unto Enoch all the inhabitants of the earth. And he beheld, and lo, Zion in process of time was taken up into heaven. And the Lord said unto Enoch, Behold mine abode for ever. And Enoch also beheld the residue of the people, which were the sons of Adam. And they were a mixture of all the seed of Adam, save it was the seed of Cain. For the seed of Cain were black, and had not place among them. And after that Zion was taken up into heaven, Enoch beheld, and lo, all the nations of the earth were before him. And there came generation upon generation, and Enoch was high and lifted up, even in the bosom of the Father, and of the Son of Man. And behold, the power of Satan was upon all the face of the earth. And he saw angels descending out of heaven, and he heard a loud voice saying, Woe, woe be unto the inhabitants of the earth. And he beheld Satan, and he had a great chain in his hand, and it veiled the whole face of the earth with darkness. And he looked up and laughed, and his angels rejoiced. And Enoch beheld angels descending out of heaven, bearing testimony of the Father and Son, and the Holy Ghost fell on many, and they were caught up by the powers of heaven into Zion.
And it came to pass that the God of heaven looked upon the residue of the people, and he wept. And Enoch bore record of it, saying, How is it that the heavens weep, and shed forth their tears as the rain upon the mountains? And Enoch said unto the Lord, How is it that thou canst weep, seeing thou art holy, and from all eternity to all eternity? And were it possible that man could number the particles of the earth, yea, millions of earths like this, it would not be a beginning to the number of thy creations, and thy curtains are stretched out still, and yet thou art there, and thy bosom is there, and also thou art just, thou art merciful and kind for ever, and thou hast taken Zion to thine own bosom, from all thy creations, from all eternity to all eternity, and naught but peace, justice, and truth is the habitation of thy throne and mercy shall go before thy face and have no end. How is it thou canst weep? The Lord said unto Enoch, Behold these thy brethren, they are the workmanship of mine own hands, and I gave unto them their knowledge in the day I created them, and in the garden of Eden gave I unto man his agency, and unto thy brethren have I said, and also given commandment, that they should love one another, and that they should choose me their father. But behold, they are without affection, and they hate their own blood, and the fire of mine indignation is kindled against them. And in my hot displeasure will I send in the floods upon them, for my fierce anger is kindled against them. Behold, I am God. Man of holiness is my name. Man of counsel is my name and endless and eternal is my name also. Wherefore I can stretch forth mine hands and hold all the creations which I have made, and mine eye can pierce them also, and among all the workmanship of mine hands there has not been so great wickedness as among thy brethren. But behold, their sins shall be upon the heads of their fathers. Satan shall be their father, and misery shall be their doom and the whole heavens shall weep over them, even all the workmanship of mine hands. Wherefore should not the heavens weep, seeing these shall suffer? But behold, these which thine eyes are upon shall perish in the floods, and behold, I will shut them up. A prison have I prepared for them, and that which I have chosen hath pled before my face. Wherefore he suffereth for their sins, inasmuch as they will repent in the day that my chosen shall return unto me. And until that day they shall be in torment. Wherefore, for this shall the heavens weep, yea, and all the workmanship of mine hands. And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Enoch, and told Enoch all the doings of the children of men. Wherefore Enoch knew, and looked upon their wickedness and their misery, and wept and stretched forth his arms, and his heart swelled wide as eternity, and his bowels yearned, and all eternity shook. And Enoch also saw Noah and his family, that the posterity of all the sons of Noah should be saved with a temporal salvation. Wherefore Enoch saw that Noah built an ark, and that the Lord smiled upon it, and held it in his own hand. But upon the residue of the wicked the floods came, and swallowed them up. And as Enoch saw this, he had bitterness of soul, and wept over his brethren, and said unto the heavens, I will refuse to be comforted. But the Lord said unto Enoch, Lift up your heart, and be glad, and look. And it came to pass that Enoch looked, and from Noah he beheld all the families of the earth, and he cried unto the Lord, saying, when shall the day of the Lord come? When shall the blood of the righteous be shed, that all they that mourn may be sanctified and have eternal life? And the Lord said, It shall be in the meridian of time, in the days of wickedness and vengeance. And behold, Enoch saw the day of the coming of the Son of Man, even in the flesh, and his soul rejoiced, saying, The righteous is lifted up and the Lamb is slain from the foundation of the world, and through faith 
I am in the bosom of the Father, and behold, Zion is with me. And it came to pass that Enoch looked upon the earth, and he heard a voice from the bowels thereof saying, Woe, woe is me, the mother of men. I am pained, I am weary, because of the wickedness of my children. When shall I rest, and be cleansed from the filthiness which is gone forth out of me? When will my Creator sanctify me, that I may rest, and righteousness for a season abide upon my face? And when Enoch heard the earth mourn, he wept, and cried unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, wilt thou not have compassion upon the earth? Wilt thou not bless the children of Noah? And it came to pass that Enoch continued his cry unto the Lord, saying, I ask thee, O Lord, in the name of thine only begotten, even Jesus Christ, that thou wilt have mercy upon Noah and his seed, that the earth might never more be covered by the floods. And the Lord could not withhold, and he covenanted with Enoch, and swear unto him with an oath, that he would stay the floods, that he would call upon the children of Noah. And he sent forth an unalterable decree, that a remnant of his seed should always be found among all nations, while the earth should stand. And the Lord said, Blessed is he through whose seed Messiah shall come. For he saith, I am Messiah, the King of Zion, the Rock of Heaven, which is broad as eternity. Whoso cometh in at the gate and climbeth up by me shall never fall. Wherefore blessed are they of whom I have spoken, for they shall come forth with songs of everlasting joy. And it came to pass that Enoch cried unto the Lord, saying, When the Son of Man cometh in the flesh, shall the earth rest? I pray thee, show me these things. And the Lord said unto Enoch, Look. And he looked, and beheld the Son of Man lifted up on the cross after the manner of men. And he heard a loud voice, and the heavens were veiled, and all the creations of God mourned, and the earth groaned, and the rocks were rent, and the saints arose, and were crowned at the right hand of the Son of Man, with crowns of glory. And as many of the spirits as were in prison came forth, and stood on the right hand of God, and the remainder were reserved in chains of darkness, until the judgment of the great day. And again Enoch wept, and cried unto the Lord, saying, When shall the earth rest? And Enoch beheld the Son of Man ascend up unto the Father. And he called unto the Lord, saying, Wilt thou not come again upon the earth? For as much as thou art God, and I know thee, and thou hast sworn unto me, and commanded me that I should ask in the name of thine only begotten, thou hast made me, and given unto me a right to thy throne, and not of myself, but through thine own grace. Wherefore I ask thee if thou wilt not come again on the earth. And the Lord said unto Enoch, As I live, even so will I come in the last days, in the days of wickedness and vengeance, to fulfill the oath which I have made unto you concerning the children of Noah. And the day shall come that the earth shall rest, but before that day the heavens shall be darkened, and a veil of darkness shall cover the earth, and the heavens shall shake, and also the earth, and great tribulations shall be among the children of men, but my people will I preserve. And righteousness will I send down out of heaven, and truth will I send forth out of the earth to bear testimony of mine only begotten, his resurrection from the dead, yea, and also the resurrection of all men. And righteousness and truth will I cause to sweep the earth as with a flood to gather out mine elect from the four quarters of the earth unto a place which I shall prepare, an holy city, that my people may gird up their loins and be looking forth for the time of my coming. For there shall be my tabernacle, and it shall be called Zion, a new Jerusalem. And the Lord said unto Enoch, Then shalt thou and all thy city meet them there, and we will receive them into our bosom and they shall see us, and we will fall upon their necks, and they shall fall upon our necks, 
and we will kiss each other. And there shall be mine abode, and it shall be Zion, which shall come forth out of all the creations which I have made. And for the space of a thousand years, the earth shall rest. And it came to pass that Enoch saw the day of the coming of the Son of Man in the last days, to dwell on the earth in righteousness for the space of a thousand years. But before that day, he saw great tribulations among the wicked, and he also saw the sea that it was troubled, and men's hearts failing them, looking forth with fear for the judgments of the Almighty God, which should come upon the wicked. And the Lord showed Enoch all things, even unto the end of the world, and he saw the day of the righteous, the hour of their redemption, and received a fullness of joy. And all the days of Zion, in the days of Enoch, were three hundred and sixty-five years. And Enoch and all his people walked with God, and he dwelt in the midst of Zion. And it came to pass that Zion was not, for God received it up into his own bosom, and from thence went forth the saying, Zion is fled. Chapter 8 And all the days of Enoch were four hundred and thirty years. And it came to pass that Methuselah, the son of Enoch, was not taken, that the covenants of the Lord might be fulfilled, which he made to Enoch. For he truly covenanted with Enoch that Noah should be of the fruit of his loins. And it came to pass that Methuselah prophesied that from his loins should spring all the kingdoms of the earth through Noah, and he took glory unto himself. And there came forth a great famine into the land, and the Lord cursed the earth with a sore curse, and many of the inhabitants thereof died. And it came to pass that Methuselah lived one hundred and eighty-seven years, and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived, after he begat Lamech, seven hundred and eighty-two years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were nine hundred and sixty-nine years, and he died. And Lamech lived one hundred and eighty-two years, and begat a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, This son shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands, because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And Lamech lived, after he begat Noah, five hundred and ninety-five years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech were seven hundred and seventy-seven years and he died. And Noah was four hundred and fifty years old, and begat Japheth. And forty-two years afterward he begat Shem, of her who was the mother of Japheth. And when he was five hundred years old, he begat Ham. And Noah and his sons hearkened unto the Lord, and gave heed, and they were called the sons of God. And when these men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, The sons of men saw that those daughters were fair, and they took them wives, even as they chose. And the Lord said unto Noah, The daughters of thy sons have sold themselves. For behold, mine anger is kindled against the sons of men, for they will not hearken to my voice. And it came to pass that Noah prophesied and taught the things of God, even as it was in the beginning. And the Lord said unto Noah, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for he shall know that all flesh shall die. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years, and if men do not repent, I will send in the floods upon them. And in those days there were giants on the earth, and they sought Noah to take away his life. But the Lord was with Noah, and the power of the Lord was upon him. And the Lord ordained Noah after his own order and commanded him that he should go forth and declare his gospel unto the children of men, even as it was given unto Enoch. And it came to pass that Noah called upon the children of men that they should repent, but they hearkened not unto his words. And also, after that they had heard him, they came up before him, saying, Behold, we are the sons of God. Have we not taken unto ourselves the daughters of men? And are we not eating and drinking, and marrying and giving in marriage? And our wives bear unto us children, and the same are mighty men, which are like unto men of old, men of great renown. 
and they hearkened not unto the words of Noah. And God saw that the wickedness of men had become great in the earth, and every man was lifted up in the imagination of the thoughts of his heart, being only evil continually. And it came to pass that Noah continued his preaching unto the people, saying, Hearken, and give heed unto my words. Believe, and repent of your sins, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, even as our fathers, and ye shall receive the Holy Ghost, that ye may have all things made manifest. And if ye do not this, the floods will come in upon you. Nevertheless, they hearkened not. And it repented Noah, and his heart was pained that the Lord had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at the heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things, and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth Noah that I have created them, and that I have made them. And he hath called upon me, for they have sought his life. And thus Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, for Noah was a just man, and perfect in his generation. And he walked with God, as did also his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was corrupt before God, and it was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted its way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence, and behold, I will destroy all flesh from off the earth. Thank you.